As the industry's leading sales agency, Preferred Equine recently introduced its exciting new online sales portal, Preferred Equine Online. Developed by our experienced sales team, the powerful new platform with cutting edge technology makes buying and selling easy from the comfort of your home or office over any device. Our experienced sales team offers full customer service for buyers and sellers as it relates to the collection, distribution and transfer of the horses offered. Sellers can enter a horse as easy as one, two, three with a searchable database while allowing comments, photos and other documents. Buyers can view live pedigrees, past performances and race videos. To create your account or learn more, visit www.preferredequine.com or call 914-773-7777. Winback Farm of Canada is home to three exceptional trotters. Archangel sired two 2021 Super Final winners, Fashion Frenzy and Twin B. Archie. My MVP sired 2021 Ohio Sire Stakes Final winner Herculisa. Look for My MVP's first Ontario crop and two-year-old stakes action in 2022. Trixton sired many 2021 stakes winners, including Quattro de Julio and Beltassima. His first Ontario crop will fall in 2022. For more information, Winback Farm. Com. I'm here at Spring Garden Ranch with George Ducharme, New England's newest Hall of Famer. Congratulations, George. Well, thank you very much. It's a great honor to be inducted with all the people I grew up with and around. You started out at Foxborough. You're now on the Grand Circuit. Everyone knows your name. That has to be amazing. It is really amazing. I never thought it would ever turn into anything like this, a little guy at Foxborough, and just thought I'd be happy doing that. And the business really has been good to me, and on the people I've met, it's been great. Well, and you started out New York Sire Stakes. You just took those um, by storm. Um, you continue to do that, but now the mass eligibles. Tell us a little bit about what makes these horses be able to race in a Massachusetts eligible event. The most of the Massachusetts horses have to be in the, the mares have to be in the state December 1st till they fall. So a lot of my owners have their own farms and that's how the mass I has, has progressed for me. And now the money, because of the slot money, has really taken off, and we've raised it for really nice money. You have 15 in your stable that are mass eligible, spread across New York breads, PA breads, New Jersey, Maine, and Ontario. Um, tell us a little bit about the track sizes that you have to race at. Most of them are the half miles, obviously, for the ones that are New York eligible. But we race on a 5 ace at Plain Ridge, so it really doesn't matter what size track they have to race on all summer, that I can usually get them shot and geared up to get around the 5 ace, no problem. We talked to some of your people here, and they had amazing things to say about you. One of the things is that they mentioned that you utilize all of, you utilize the mile track, you're also using the half mile because you have to race on those, and paddock time. Tell us a little bit about your program. Yeah, I'd like to make sure they all can get around a half because it just seems like it makes it much easier, especially for the majority of New York breads I have. I like to just switch it up, keep them in a different routine. I think they get stale if you keep them on the same program all the time. So just to try to make it enjoyable for them because once the summer comes, it's all work. We're up and down the highway and trying to make a living. Right, and you also, I noticed, when going to the half, you walk up the hills you don't um, take the regular path over to the half. And also when you're turning to start your miles, you really let them walk and, and get some patience before you start your training trips. I do, I don't wanna, I'm not one to get them hot. I think if they can relax and enjoy their life, I think it makes it that much better for them as racehorses and the drivers and everyone else as we go along. Some of the trainers that we spoke to earlier today have mentioned that their discussions with you in regards to shoeing. Tell us where you start when you come down and how you change to go to the stone dust tracks. Most of the time down here we just use flat shoes and half rounds. For the clay, I, young horses, I don't want them sticking and tearing any ligaments or anything. So we usually stay that way until we go north. And then once we get up north, we adjust to the stone dust and see what they need going forward. 
What is your training methods? Are you just the regular two trips? Do you believe in intervals? What's your what's what's the method to get them to the track? Mostly we just do two trips. I like to break it up for them and we'll go mile and a half sometimes, but just something different like that. I've never been interval because of where I stable. There's not that option to do that anyway. So we've just changed that and juggled it around to fit our schedules. Well, let's talk about some of your babies. Let's start off with with Chapter Tracks, a $75,000 yearling trotting filly um, from Kentucky. Tell me a little bit about how you think she's progressing thus far. Uh, she's been very good filly, does her job very well, really good gated and smart, and can do anything you want. When you call on her, she can switch gears. I'm really, really happy with her. Another Chapter 7 that you were high on is Ticket to the Parties, baby, Party at 7. Tell me a little bit about that trotting colt. That colt was good. He's a little growthy, so we've given him a little time, but he's progressed in doing everything I can really ask of him at this point. Let's talk about some of the big money price horses. Let's start off 115 for Kareem, which is named after a pastry chef. Um, tell us a little bit about what you think of this filly. The filly's doing very good. Um, she's a little typical Father Patrick, a little bit of a handful at first, but she's learning her lessons, and she acts like she can... Uh, go pretty good, so I'm pretty happy with her at the moment. George, one of the things I noticed about your stable is there's no superstition and no lack of name changes in this barn. No, the owners are pretty, Mr. Donovan, he changes the names on just about every one we buy every year. And my other owners with all the homebreds, they're coming up with names, I don't know how they do it. It's not my forte <laughs> per se, but they look into it and then we've so some are pretty neat. Well, we have to look it up because I feel like you may have the most name changes of any <laughs> barn um, in harness racing for two-year-olds. I believe that too. Believe me, <laughs> trying to do bills and the stake and it gets a little mixed up sometimes. Yes. Uh, let's move on and talk about purchase for 95000 was you can count on it. Name change to Z Zadok? Zadok, yes. Zadok. Tell us about the Father Patrick Colt. He's a nice little colt. I'm pretty happy with him so far. He's going along at the speed we want. Same a typical Father Patrick, a little funny at first, but he's learning and he's getting the hang of it. What about moving on? Let's talk about Royalty for Life's Mama uh, has one that you're doing right now, Bravado. Tell me about that Trixton Colt. That Colt is um, a little smaller than the other foals I've had out of that mare, which he seems a little more athletic. So I'm looking forward to seeing him keep progressing and getting ready maybe for Jersey, but definitely for Massachusetts. Also, let's talk about Celia B. Money at $70,000 Huntsville Pacing Philly. A pacer for George Ducharme? Yeah, we got a few this year, and um, a couple owners wanted to try to get some pacers, so we bought a couple. Um, that filly's doing very well. I really, for what I know about pacers, I'm pretty happy with her. I heard someone mention that you're doing so well in the Massachusetts sire stakes that you decided to move into the Pacers as well. How many of those Pacers do you have eligible to the Mass? I think I have four Mass eligible Pacers also that are all homebreds, but they're eligible for Mass, and that's what we're concentrating on in the fall. So let's talk about, you have a large stable here. Um, every year you continue to have things on the Grand Circuit, horses on the Grand Circuit. What do you attribute your success to? I just think I have great help. They've been with me for years and they really contribute to the whole program. Without them, we'd be lost. And I got owners that have faith in me and are buying up upper quality horses to get us to that level. I noticed that all of your people here know everything about the stable. They're invested. Um, Ashley, your barn manager down there, she, she knows so much about it. It seems like everyone really cares so much about what happens with the horses, every horse in this stable. Yeah, they're really great. Most of them have been with me the minimum of four or five years. Ashley's been with me 10. Um, without them, we'd be lost. They really care about their job, and they enjoy their work, and I guess they enjoy working here. So You even have Frank, one of your second trainers, is actually does some shoeing jobs for you. Well, yeah, the blacksmith only comes down every three weeks or so, so Frank has to tack on the shoes and stuff, but Frank's been great. He drove for me this summer of Vernon, really had a good meet up there with him, and um, everything's headed in the right direction. Erin is your extraordinaire with the pacing colts? Well, she's got one, but we try to keep her on the trotters, whether she <laughs> wants to or not. <laughs> she's listening to us joke right now about her. 
George, we have a major milestone too this year coming up. You ended the year with 999 wins. Your first win this season back will give you a thousand. That's a major milestone. It is. Um, that where it only goes back to 91 with the USTA records. I know I've won races in the 80s, so I'm over a thousand, but now for the record books, it'll be official. And um, that's something I never thought I'd get to either. It's pretty amazing. Well, you've won the Hamiltonian. You're active on the Grand Circuit. Um, tell us about testing, testing coming back this year. He's filled out and developed really good. Um, I got high expectations for him. He did everything right last year. He got caught in that rainstorm in the final, and he just didn't handle the track good that night. But he really never disappointed us all year, and I think he's got a chance to come back and play at the top level. What are, we, what are your goals when you leave Florida? What are the goals for these horses that you've developed? I just want them to be competitive in the classes that we race them in. If it's in New York and they're not top size stake, if they're an Excelsior horse, just be one of the better Excelsior horses. We want to all make money, keep the owners happy, win in races, prof be profitable, the grooms work hard. They want to win and take, be appreciated and get smile and go get their picture taken. Exactly. And I think that's the key. Exactly. Everyone wants to meet in the winner's circle, That's right? right. <laughs> George, uh, as far as New York goes, let's talk a little bit about their program. They have the Sire Stakes program, which is highly competitive, but also they have the Excelsior program, which gives you a chance to allow your horse to mature. Absolutely. You don't have to throw them right into the fire. The Excelsior works out perfect. You can bring them along a little slower. And um, the money's good. You race for 15000 a week and a $50,000 final. You can make a living in there. What do you think about your owners providing you this stable, this lifestyle? You've got to love being down here. I know that you've been quoted before saying that the horses are able to just f flourish and blossom. Yes, I think they really do. And obviously, Florida is great for the people. There's no doubt. I wouldn't lie about that. But I just think the horses being over the soft track, being in the warm weather, being able to grow and develop, get paddock time, it just makes such a difference, I can see. George, one thing that your people talk to me about is the fact that you encourage them to learn. You're teaching all the time so that they can go on and have great careers after they leave you. That's my hope. I mean, we need to grow this business more, definitely. And I don't want to micromanage. If you tell, if you tell everyone how to do every little thing, well, they're going to just lose interest. Let them use their thoughts, try things. If it doesn't work, we'll regroup and redo it again. What do you think about if there was one thing, one tip that you could give people watching that are interested in training two-year-olds, what would you tell them? Patience. <laughs> Patience. You've got to let, let the horse tell you what they're ready to do. You can't force them if they're not ready. Just take a step back, let them go slower. Not, it's like people, not everyone's going to learn at the same pace. Does, does that happen? Do you turn them out or is that just backing down their training? A lot of times just backing down their training. If I have one down here that gets a little growthiness sore, I'll just back up, turn them out for a week or two. But for the most part, just be patient. L listen to the horse tell you what they, they're ready for. That has to be your caretakers too, um, to a large extent. I'm sure rubbing on these horses, uh, using, using their talents. Uh, when does the vet come into play? Not till there's something we really can't put our finger on or pulse on and we need a little help. But other than that, we try to do things ourselves here you know, at this point, you're not going to do, I'm not doing vet work on two-year-olds. 90% of it, they're growing. You have to let Mother Nature take care of it. And you're okay with turning them out at two? Absolutely. I mean, I'd rather get them to the races, even if it's late in the year, because it's hard if they don't prove they ha can go fast enough anymore. But you have to, you can't force the issue if they're not ready. Great. Well, thank you, George. Thank you very much. Windback Farm of Canada is home to three exceptional trotters. Archangel Sire 2 2021 Super Final winners, Fashion Frenzy and Twin B. Archie. My MVP Sire 2021 Ohio Sire Stakes Final winner Herculisa. Look for My MVP's first Ontario crop and two year old stakes action in 2022. Trixton Sire many 2021 stakes winners, including Quattro de Julio and Beltassima. His first Ontario crop will fall in 2022. For more information, Windback Farm. Com. As the industry's leading sales agency, Preferred Equine recently introduced its exciting new online sales portal, Preferred Equine Online. Developed by our experienced sales team, the powerful new platform with cutting-edge technology makes buying and selling easy from the comfort of your home or office over any device. 
Our experienced sales team offers full customer service for buyers and sellers as it relates to the collection, distribution, and transfer of the horses offered. Sellers can enter a horse as easy as one, two, three, with a searchable database while allowing comments, photos, and other documents. Buyers can view live pedigrees, past performances, and race videos. To create your account or learn more, visit www.preferredequine.com or call 914-773-7777.